Hey, my name's Helen and you're listening to the Love Mondays Club podcast. If you're a fellow tutor, trainer or coach, then welcome. You're in the right place. Whether you're looking to start, grow or expand your online services, this podcast is for you. My goal is to help you build your business, earn more money and have more fun in this messy muddle we call entrepreneurship. Every Monday, I'm going to be sharing practical tips to help you accelerate your business. From marketing to mindset to money, we'll cover it all. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Love Mondays Club podcast. So I have changed my schedule a little bit in my podcast lineup because over the past couple of weeks, I have been welcoming lots of new people into my Accelerate program. And when people sign up, we always have a sort of one-to-one strategy call where we sit down and do like a big overview of your business. We have like a bit of a helicopter view and we look at all the different elements of it, look at what's working, what's not working, where we really want to focus our attention. And one of the number th- one things that we always focus on to start with is making more sales and getting a sort of quick cash injection into the business. So we look at like, how can we start making some quick wins versus, you know, long-term strategy of also sales and what we're going to be doing. Off the back of this, I really wanted to share with you today some tips about how you can be making more money in your business. Because again, when people come and work with me, it's really important that they start to see a return on their investment really quickly. So that is one of the first things that we always focus on. And I've noticed that, you know, over the past couple of weeks of welcoming new people into my programs, that lots of us have very similar worries, concerns, and really easy things that we can do as well in our businesses to just turn on the tap a little bit and start making a bit more money. So in today's episode, I'm going to share with you my five top tips on how you can start bringing more income into your business. And at the end, I'm also going to tell you about a new freebie masterclass that I am running in April, and it's going to all tie in beautifully with what we're talking about today. So tip number one is all about utilizing your time. So one thing I find lots of us are very guilty of is being very busy day to day. But actually, a lot of people come to me and say, you know, I feel like my timetable's packed. I don't have room for anything else, but I just don't feel like my earnings are reflecting on that, the amount of hard work that I'm putting in. And what I generally find is that when we sit down and we look at people's timetables, what they're doing, they're either doing a lot of bits in their business that actually aren't money making activities or the way they've positioned their timetable it means that they have either dead space or you know time that's being I don't want to use wasted but time that maybe could be used in a much better way so one of the things I really recommend doing first of all is looking at just how you're spending your time in your business like are you making enough time and opportunities for you to be working with your clients so for me my order of priorities throughout the day is client work always first and foremost next thing I'll then focus on during the day is marketing marketing and then finally the last thing is knickknacks background admin the kind of things that I like to sit there and have a cup of tea and feel like I'm kind of relaxing while I'm doing it as well but that's like the order of importance to me so in my diary in my timetable having time every day to either serve my clients or meet potential new clients or create new programs for clients that is the number one priority now quite a few people that I work with are sort of service-based businesses and whether this is online or face-to-face. And what I find as well is that when we've been doing something for a long time, it's really easy for us to just be kind of in this routine and not always step out of it and think actually could things change. So, you know, I've had it before where people have joined my programs and we have literally in one session sat there and just shuffled the timings of like when they run their group programs, you know, allowing them more space to have, you know, run two programs side by side rather than just the one. And little tweaks like this, like literally it's just a change in the timetable, but it frees up so much time and genuinely could offer you the potential to like double the amount of services that you're offering, therefore doubling your income as you go. So that's tip number one. Have a look at how you're spending your time. Take a step back, look at what you're doing and think, actually, could I make changes here? Is there any way that I can free up more time, free up more opportunities for people to work closely with me? 
Tip number two is all about increasing your offer suite. What I mean by this is essentially looking at how you can scale your business. So again, lots of people who come to work with me and join the Accelerate program are often caught in a bit of a sort of one-to-one trap where they're selling their time for money and ultimately we only have so many hours in the day and we don't want to be working you know ridiculously late at night re- you know working huge long full days creeping into our weekends you know that is that is not the reason why we decided to start our own businesses so we don't want to be burning ourselves out by trying to like deliver as much one-to-one as possible and then not really having any work-life balance to go with it so one of the really important things that I always focus on with my clients is looking at how can we take their service or their product whatever it is that they're offering and scale it on a bigger level and the idea of this as well is that it gives people different points that they can come and work with you so you're going to have your really high-end stuff which is one-to-one then you might have like group models then you might have sort of products or services that might be self-led so it's almost more of like a passive income coming in so the idea is that people can work with you for different lengths of time at different time points and one of the main things about this as well is reducing the risk of having big huge waiting lists now I know that when we first start our business, I know that when I first started mine, there was almost this big aspiration I had of having this really big, long, huge waiting list. And, you know, it made me feel really good because I felt like I was in demand and I felt like I had this steady stream of clients coming through. But the reality is that if we're providing a service that is sometimes time sensitive, people aren't going to hang around on our waiting list for too long because if they really need the help and support, they're going to go out there and find it potentially from somebody else. So, Waiting lists are not a bad thing if, for example, we are launching, let's say, like a new service or a new product. So let's say if in a couple of weeks time I was going to produce a new course, I would start a waiting list of people who are interested. So those people on the waiting list, I'm only going to keep them there for two or three weeks before the service gets launched. And they're going to be like my VIP members. You know, they're going to get like an exclusive discount or an exclusive offer or the first chance to sign up something like that. But the idea is I don't want people sat on a waiting list for weeks, months, if not even possibly years, because that is money being left on the table. And if people want to work with me and I want to help them, then we've got to find ways to do that. And it's exactly the same for you in your business. So that's tip number two. Have a look at like all the different ways that people can work with you at the moment. And have you got a system in place that allows you to scale and allows people to come work with you at different price points at different times? Because again, this is also going to create different streams of revenue coming into your business and is going to help you feel a lot more stable. It's not going to feel so seasonal and you're going to feel a lot more in control of your income throughout the months as well. Okay, so those first two tips there, one and two, they were, you know, very much about kind of like systems, a bit of strategy, a bit of like product base, you know, just looking at different opportunities and ways for you to work with people and also more ways for people to work with you as well. Now, the next three tips are more around this idea, I guess, sort of focusing more on like marketing and how you can get more awareness and brand awareness and get more sales in that way. So tip number three is all about this idea of getting more social proof from your current clients. Now, I did do a whole episode recently all about how to get more reviews and the different types of reviews you can get. As I'm sat here recording this episode, I don't remember exactly what the number of the podcast was, but I will find it after I finish this recording and I'll pop a link in the show notes for you. But one of the reasons I've put this down as one of the tips is because your clients are your best marketers. Like they are the ones who love working with you, who are seeing results, who are showing up, who really know the value that you can bring. And that social proof is so much more persuasive for potential customers than just you talking about how wonderful your programs are. Now, don't get me wrong. You should always be shouting from the rooftops about how great you are or the success you're having or the success your clients are having. But if we can get like the words of our clients and get examples from them, that's going to be so much more powerful. So I highly recommend, again, tip number three, looking at all the people you're currently working with, asking them all to give you some feedback on how things are going at the moment. It doesn't have to be the end of your contract with them. It doesn't have to be the end of the service. You can always ask for feedback at any point along your customer's journey. So like I say, link in the show notes if you want some more tips on how to get more reviews from your clients. Tip number four is all about simply telling more people 
about what you offer. I was in um, a huge group training call recently and one of the topics that they started talking about was sales and the host of the of the call asked the large group of people on Zoom, who here feels uncomfortable with sales? And I kind of glanced up and looked at the screen, you know, there were lo- lots of hundreds of faces on there. The vast majority of them put their hands up. And I thought about this and I thought, this is this is very true of a lot of people I work with as well. And, and I definitely used to feel like this back in the day that sales can feel a bit icky and a bit uncomfortable. And I think the problem is that the word sales brings connotations of like, you know, dodgy tactics, fake scarcity, all these sorts of different things, almost being a little bit pushy. And those, of course, are all the things that we are aspiring not to be. And you can make sales without doing any of the above there. But one of the biggest problems I see is that I don't actually know what people's services are or how I can work with them. So sometimes I go on people's social media profiles and do little audits and I'm scrolling through and it takes me a long time to find, you know, the last post they did where they actually told me how I can work with them or what they can do for me. And I think sometimes on social media, we get too hung up in trying to provide loads of value, trying to provide freebies. And don't get me wrong, all this stuff is really important because it builds up your credibility, it builds up your trust. But ultimately, we do also have to make offers. And, you know, I bet you are so passionate about what you do, you really care about it, you want to help as many people as possible. And that's the point. You're not selling, you're not pushing, you're simply offering help to your audience who probably are sat there really need it and they're waiting for you to approach them and tell them how they can work with you. Now don't get me wrong, sometimes when you put sales posts out there, when you send out the emails and things, some people might unfollow you. That is the nature of the game. Those people were probably never going to buy from you in the first place anyway. So this is no big great loss to your business. So don't be afraid of maybe losing a few people here and there when you do start making offers because it's not that you're being pushy, it's just potentially those people are there for the freebies and then they're going to go off and leave. And that's honestly nothing for you to worry about. So tip number four, tell more people about what you do. Shout it loud and proud, you know, talk about it every week. Make sure that people really understand that what you specialize in, get yourself known as the go-to person and help people, you know, make it easy for people to work with you. Tip number five, the last one, and this sort of feeds into this idea of telling more people about it. Now, you might have built up a certain level audience and you know, there's only so many times you can tell them about your services until things might start to feel a little bit stagnant. Like a really interesting statistic, I think online, is that generally you'll find that like one to 10% of your audience will buy from you. And I see this across both my businesses. So my tutoring business, it was always around the kind of 10% mark of my audience buying things from me. In my coaching business, maybe around 6% conversion rate. It kind of varies depending on the offers that I put out there. But ultimately what this shows is that actually only a small percentage of our audience are going to buy from us. So it's really important that we have a strategy in place to keep increasing our audience size all the time because as the nature of this podcast episode is about, it's all about making more sales. So if you want to make more sales, you want to keep increasing your revenue every month, then you've got to make sure that your audience, your potential pool of people who want to buy from you is also growing at the same time. So you see kind of tips four and five go hand in hand together here. So we need to be putting out that really valuable content that attracts people in, you know, giving them the value, giving them the freebies, drawing them into our sales funnels. But then we also have to be going back to tip number four, telling them about it, telling them about how they can work with us. So just to repeat those five tips there for you, they were number one is all about creating more time for your services. So doing a big review of how you're spending your time, you know, how many opportunities have you got for people to come and work with you? Can you jiggle things around to help you with that work-life balance? Similar to this as well for tip number two, thinking about your offer suite, like what are all the different ways that people can work with you? Can you start scaling some of your services? Is there a way that you can create more of like a one-to-many approach, which is gonna really help you have a big cash injection into your business? Then the next three tips were more about your marketing. So this is this idea of having lots of social proof, lots of evidence from your clients about how great you are, what an impact you've made on their lives and their businesses. And 
uh, or their education, depending on, you know, the different different industry that you're working in. But that's going to be really persuasive for your potential audience. And then the other two were all about keep increasing your audience size and keep telling people about what you do. Keep banging the drum, be loud, be proud, shout it from the rooftops. You know, don't be shy and coy about how good you are at what you do, because that that positivity, that energy, that, you know, putting it out there to the world, that's what's going to really attract people as well. Like, For a lot of people I know listening to the podcast, we're service-based providers and ultimately people buy people. You know, nine times out of 10, like we're not actually overly, some people are, but we're not overly that interested in the nitty gritty of things. We just want to know, are we going to get on with this person? Are they going to help us to achieve what we need? Are they going to inspire us, keep us motivated? All these sorts of different things. So be yourself, put yourself out there. And that's going to be one of the biggest magnetizing things you can do for your business and your sales. As promised, I also wanted to quickly talk to you about my free masterclass that I'm doing. And this ties in really nicely with points four and five, all about increasing audience size and telling more people about it. Now, I really truly believe that visibility is one of top three, at least minimum, most important things that you need to be focusing on in your business every day. Like you want to be becoming known as the expert in what you do. So to do that, you need to have your voice out there, your face out there. You need to be sharing all that value and getting lots of eyes on your business to help you make these sales. On Tuesday, the 18th of April at 10 a.m., I'm going to be running a free masterclass that you can come along to. And I'm going to be sharing with you some top tips on how you can be more visible online. And not in a way that I'm going to make you, you know, dance around and do reels and all sorts of things that are going to make you uncomfortable. But we're going to talk about real life, easy strategies that you can start implementing that's going to make a huge difference to your business. So if you think that this is something that you would benefit from, something that you would find helpful, then I've popped a link as well in the show notes. And in there, there's a little form. You just fill in your name, your email address. Please put your social media handle in there as well, because I would love to follow you and connect with you and find out more about your business. And then once you hit submit, the magical mysteries of email marketing will kick into place and I will send you over all of the details that you need, including the Zoom details for the call. So I really look forward to connecting with you and I really look forward to seeing you on the 18th of April. It's going to be a great masterclass. It's packed full of value and I'm really excited to share all these tips with you on that call. Otherwise, have a great week and I'll see you for next week's episode. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Love Mondays Club podcast. Don't forget to review and subscribe or share this episode with one of your business friends. For more information and support from today's episode, head over to the show notes at lovemondaysclub.co.uk. Have a great week and I'll see you next Monday.